Honesty is important in all relationships. If you really think about any of the important relationships in your life, honesty is going to be the foundation upon which they are built. And our relationship with God is going to be no different. Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. I post new videos every single Monday and Thursday. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely be sure to subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about this concept of radical honesty. This is something that I've been learning about through a book that I've been reading called The Sacred Slow. I will have it linked down below. It's been wonderful, okay? highly recommend it and in the book it talks about this concept of being completely candid and transparent with the Lord it wasn't until I read this concept in the book I realized that there are some areas in my life where I actually wasn't being completely honest with God I know he sees my heart I know he knows my thoughts but I wasn't inviting him in to these things that were constantly going on in my head so in today's video, we're gonna be diving into this concept of radical honesty, talking about what it is, what it looks like, and signs that you may need to be more honest with God. So let's go ahead and get into it. So to start this off, I actually wanna read you guys a quick quote from the book. It is, again, The Sacred Slow, and I'm gonna have it linked down in the description box. Now, the quote says, let me pull it up here, okay. Right where you are, in moments both ordinary and extraordinary, you and Jesus can live attentive to each other. Honesty is a friend of intimacy with God, and conversely, denial is an enemy of intimacy with God. Fast denial. Be honest with yourself so that you can be honest with your God. Sis, how good is that? So when it comes to being honest with God and this concept of radical honesty, Honesty is important in all relationships. If you really think about any of the important relationships in your life, honesty is going to be the foundation upon which they are built. And our relationship with God is going to be no different. Now, there can be a few reasons why we are not completely honest with God. I feel like generally, if we're not honest with God, it can fall into one of these three categories. So first and foremost, we might feel guilt or shame. Sometimes we don't invite God into what we are honestly feeling and going through because we feel like we made a mistake we shouldn't have done what we did we should have known better whatever the reason and the origin of that guilt and shame it causes us to run around like Adam and Eve trying to piece together leaves to hide ourselves before approaching God another category we can fall into is feeling like God doesn't care or it's too small of a thing to approach God with but the thing about it is God literally cares about everything. He's a God that cares about the details big and small. There's really nothing too small for God to be invested in because he's invested in you. Last but not least, that third category is we genuinely just forget. I know for myself, I often forget that I didn't invite God into something or that I haven't invited God into it. I'm so busy trying to figure it out, process it, think about it, and think about a solution that I'm realizing, wow, I never pause to ask God to give me his perspective on this thing. So whatever category you might find yourself in, it's never too late to do something different. It's never too late to truly go to the Father openly, honestly, and authentically. The book of Psalms literally gives us permission to express our feelings, emotions, good, bad, ugly, indifferent, to the Lord. Because yes, God knows our hearts, he knows our thoughts, he knows what we're feeling, but he also wants relationship with us and that has to be two-sided. Even if we can't see through a specific situation, by inviting God into it, by opening our hearts and being vulnerable about what's going on in our mind, our thoughts, our heart, he can then equip us to see it through. And sometimes it really comes down to just bearing our hearts. And in that, the Holy Spirit can allow us to see maybe what the root problem is of something or give us a different perspective entirely. We never know what God wants to illuminate when we genuinely open ourselves up to him. So now that we have an understanding of what radical honesty looks like and what things might be keeping us from approaching the Lord honestly, I wanna talk about two signs that it might 
might be time for you to be more honest with God. So first and foremost, you are experiencing some level of anxiety. Your mind is trying to process things, work through things, find solutions to issues, problems, concerns that you're having, and God has simply just not been invited into that situation. You've not approached the Father to truly lay down those concerns at his feet and walk away with his perfect peace. It says in the Bible, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen now, in Luke chapter 18, verse one through eight. I'm not gonna read all of that, don't worry. But it says, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. But there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. Now the thing that stands out to me about this verse is how they describe the judge. Again, it says that he does not fear God nor respect man. So if this person who doesn't fear God or respect other human beings, if he can give in and oblige and meet that woman where she is and help her conquer her adversaries, how much more will our father in heaven who is invested in us, who loves us, who sees his son Jesus when he looks at us, how much more will he assist us and help us than this judge will? So I definitely encourage you guys to read through this whole entire um, section of Luke. I will have, again, the Bible verse popped up here so you guys can check it out. But it's just a really, really great reminder for me to genuinely invite God into every area, every aspect, every worry, every thought, every concern. And when I'm experiencing anxiety and experiencing continuous thoughts about things, for me, that's a reminder and a sign that, all right, I need to be more honest with God about what I'm thinking about. I need to be more honest with God about what I'm trying to figure out, what my mind is continuously marinating on. It's time for me to approach the Father openly and honestly. So that is gonna be number one. So our second and final sign that you might need to be more honest with God is if you are not experiencing true freedom. Now, what does true freedom look like and what does true freedom feel like? True freedom feels like resting in the Lord. True freedom is relaxation. True freedom is knowing that God's got it. There's a certain level of trust, there's a certain level of dependency, and there's a certain level of intimacy with the Lord that comes with true freedom. And when you have self-honesty and couple that with the word of God and God's truth, you are going to come out with freedom. The Bible verse I have for you here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen. It is John chapter eight, verses 31 and 32. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So when we abide in God's word, we really are doing what the Bible says. Something the Bible says is thou shalt not lie, and thou shalt not lie even to oneself. So having that self-honesty and coming before the Father with that self-honesty and inviting him into it, it is always going to lead to more freedom. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And now, of course, it is your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know, what does freedom look like for you? You can take this in any direction you want. Maybe day-to-day -day freedom, freedom in your relationship with God, freedom in the roles that you are walking in in this season of life that you're in. What does freedom look like and how has the Lord enabled you to walk in that freedom? I'm gonna be dropping my response in the comments, so definitely take a second, scroll through, and drop yours as well. Per usual, I love you all, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.